We're joined now by the chairman of the English Democrats, Robin Tilbrook, and by the Conservative MP, Ian Stewart. Welcome to both of you. Ian Stewart, first of all, the Conservatives have the grand total of one MP in Scotland. Labour have 41. And at the last election, David Cameron would have gained an overall majority if Scotland's votes had been excluded. What's not to like about Scottish Independent for Conservatives? Well, my country is the United Kingdom, my nationality is British, and even though there would be a short-term electoral gain for my party, uh, I do not support the breakup of the United Kingdom of my country. It is far more important than the result of any one particular election. Would it be short-term political gain? It could be, as some people, some political pundits have predicted, that actually it could lead to one-party rule, if you like, if there was... Scotland independent and the rest of the UK remaining. I, I don't think you can extrapolate that. I mean, if you look at the, the majorities that Tony Blair had, he had a majority of the seats in England uh, as well as the UK as a whole. So I think uh, it's very dangerous to extrapolate on the basis of one election result what would happen in perpetuity. But some of your Conservative colleagues must feel that way, knowing that they would be much more likely to have electoral victory, a significant majority, if you like, without Scotland. We are the Conservative and Unionist Party, and that Unionist strand uh, is very deep in what I and most of my colleagues believe. So I would be distraught if my country was broken up. I'm British, and I don't want that to happen. Do you think that, I mean, you say you'd be distraught, do you think the Unionists are making enough of the emotional connection with Scotland, with the UK remaining as it is? Well, we had a, a very good debate in the Commons uh, last Thursday. Uh, and I made the point, and many others made similar points, that initially uh, Scotland and England coming together was like a marriage, two families coming together. But over the generations, over the centuries, you actually build something that is, that is different. You build a shared identity and heritage. Uh, and that is what is so dear to me and many of my colleagues. And that's a very emotional plea for the union to stay together. How do you argue against that? Well, I think um, uh, the thing is that, that is quite a minority opinion in, in England generally, I think. Um, the, the English are becoming more self-identifying as being English, as we see from the 2011 census results. Over 60% of the population of England, more than 32 million people, said uh, in, the in, the, in their uh, way that they answered that, that they were English only and not British. A further 10%, just under 10%, said that they were English and British. And probably only about another 5% of people who are English said um, that they were uh, just British. Wouldn't it make England more parochial, a lesser country without Scotland? Um, well, I think the, it's not really so much that. What the, the issue really is, um, should nations govern themselves? Um, and uh, so, so far as we're concerned, and of course as far as the... Scottish National Party are concerned, nations should govern themselves. In your mind, does England prop up Scotland financially and economically? Um, certainly that's our, our opinion, and, and I think the, 20, the uh, 2009 report from the House of Lords on the Barnet Formula suggested that, that was the case. How do, you, how do you argue against that? I mean, if you're looking at the amount of public spending per head, for example, it is about £1,200 higher per head in Scotland, how do you argue that to someone in England who says, let Scotland go? Well, a, a number of years ago I wrote a very dry book uh, on this <laughs> subject, uh, and, and the simple fact is no one actually knows the true financial relationship between the constituent parts of the UK because we've never allocated exactly tax receipts or spending. Uh, so people can make assertions, people can make assumptions, but no one actually knows the true relationship and that's something we would need to find out first. Right, so you don't think that England does, uh, the English taxpayer doesn't prop up um, I'm not. I'm not so saying that. Uh, I'm saying that there is no hard and fast evidence to prove the case one way or the other. How would you apportion receipts from the North Sea, for example? There are different schools of thought about how you would do that. What do you say to that, Nicola Sturgeon? Does England prop up Scotland or are you, as you said, a net contributor yeah, to mean, the... Look, Scotland, you can argue your case for or against independence, but Scotland does not Subsidised. You gave a figure a, a second ago, which is correct, that uh, public spending in Scotland is £1,200 per head higher than in the rest of the UK. But tax generated in Scotland is £1,700 per head higher. We contribute more uh, in terms of revenues, in percentage terms, than we get back in, in spending. So Scotland is not subsidised. We stand on our own two feet. We pay our way. If Scotland was to be independent, our deficit would be a smaller share of our GDP than the rest of the UK. So uh, absolutely it is not the case that Scotland Scotland is propped up All in right, any well, way. Well, to continue that line of argument that you've put forward, you accept then that an independent Scotland would leave the rest of the UK worse off? 
I think it's right that we, I mean, we've just had a, a discussion about currency union, I think right. it's right that we cooperate in many respects, sure. uh, but, but, but I believe that Scotland should access its own resources, stand on its own two feet, take its own decisions. Right, and it would leave the rest of the UK worse off. On that argument that you've just put forward, that Scotland is a net contributor to the UK public finances because of various things, but including all revenues, I think you're England arguing that an independent capable. Scotland would leave the rest of the UK worse off. I think England is perfectly capable of standing on its own two feet as an independent country. Uh, can I go back to some of the points that were made there about the social union, if I can call it that, because some of the, the links that your film talked about, the, the real bonds that exist between Scotland and England and other parts of the UK, these are strong, they will endure. You know, I've got family in England, my gran was English. Right. These are not things that depend on constitutions or how Scotland is, is governed. These are about people inhabiting the same island. Yeah. An independent you, Scotland would still be part of the British Isles. Do you agree with that? Uh, yes, I do. I think, I think we still would be uh, friends. There's no reason why we shouldn't be. Um, I would just take issue with one point, though, that's been made, and that is this idea of the rest of the UK. Because my uh, view as a lawyer um, is that actually, if Scotland goes, you've got a repeal of the Act of Union, and that means that you, you haven't got a continuing UK. Um, there might be, there so might be some shenanigans what in Parliament. Wales and Northern Ireland? Well, w Wales uh, was unified with England in 1536, so it's a slightly different case. But the, the union with Northern Ireland depends upon the union of 1801 or, originally. Um, and that was not with England, that was with the United Kingdom of Great Britain. And the Great Britain would cease to exist with Scotland going. Right. I mean, you've heard Nicola Sturgeon say that bonds would still be there. You'd still have that connection and, and uh, you know, there's some truth in that. Why would you be so distraught then? If those connections are still there, you'd still have them in Scotland. Why would independence break that? I don't want to have dual citizenship. I want my country to stay together. It is my nationality. And just hearing some of the potential consequences, why take this gamble? Why buy this one-way ticket when we have got something that has endured and worked? And together, I strongly believe that the, the constituent parts, are, their strength is greater than their individual strength. Nicola Sturgeon? Well, I don't think the Westminster system of government is working for Scotland with no disrespect at all meant to Ian. You know, we have a Tory government that most people in Scotland And yet you want to keep the pound, you want to keep the Queen's head, you want to keep it, yeah, but you want to retain so much of it and yet you want to But if it makes sense in our mutual interest to cooperate, of course, like all countries in the modern world, uh, you pull sovereignty, you cooperate where that makes sense. But why should Scotland have to be governed by a government we don't vote for, implementing policies like right. the bedroom tax that uh, we don't agree agree with. Uh, we well, should stand quickly. in our own two feet. It'd be no different um, to Canada or Australia. Uh, they both got the Queen. Why, why shouldn't Scotland have the Queen? Why shouldn't we have the Queen afterwards as well? Um, when we're a separate country, the, the Kingdom of England. All right, Robin Tilbrook, Ian Stewart, thank you. Thank you.